this is the BeeBank at Beehive. My name is Ivan Brown. I developed this Beehive while I was at university in 2016. It is a lightweight concrete Langstroth Beehive. The internal components are all standardized to the same sizes as a typical wooden Langstroth Beehive. The main difference is that the outer chamber is made out of lightweight concrete. We have at the bottom, these two components together make up the brew chamber. This one in the middle here is the super, and on top of it, the lid. I'll quickly take this apart and show you each component just to give you an idea of how they work and the different features around them. So the beehive is made out of three different components. The component in the middle here is the brood base. On my right, on your left, is the lid. And on my left here we have the super. I'll just explain each of the components first and then put the hive together so that you have an idea of how it works. Let's give us some space here. The brood base is made up of a floor, the floor of the beehive, and four short walls. They're attached, the floor and the walls are attached, making it a very strong and stable component. This is also the heaviest out of the three parts, weighing in at about 35 kilograms. This is the base of the hive, so it needs to be quite strong. It's also the part that you move the least. Once it's in your apiary, it should kind of remain permanently fixed and not have to be moved around a lot. In the front of the brood base, you'll see a large entrance. The entrance has a wide um, landing platform that gives the bees a nice space to land, come in and out of the hive. The entrance tapers off to a narrow slit. You can see just the two holes on the sides. What happens when we're casting the, the brood base is we end up with a thin layer of concrete that closes the entrance. We then take a screwdriver or, or a paint scraper and we open up two holes on the sides. Once you've brought the beehive to your apiary, you're able to customize the entrance quite easily by opening up the full entrance. Some beekeepers prefer just having two entrances on the side. This helps the bees funnel cool air into one of the holes and out and warm air out of the other. Now the brood base has cutaways on the sides and in the back so that you can lift it and move it around a little bit easier. On the sides here you can see the cutaway at the bottom. This is just so that you can get your hands in underneath the component and lift it easily without having to wedge your fingers in underneath the concrete. There's another cutaway at the back here that just lets you use the entrance on the front and the cutaway on the back to lift it. Next we have the lid. The lid from the top you'll see it has a slope. The slope just drains rainwater off to one side of the hive. It's better to have the water draining to the side and not falling in front of the hive so that the rainwater can't return back into the entrance. You'll see there's a cutaway on the top of the lid. This is just to position a chain or a cable so that when you're locking the hive and, and or strapping it closed, someone can't come and slide the chain or the cable or the strap over the edge of the hive. Underneath the lid, you'll see that there's a lip around the edge. The lip locks the lid onto the super chamber, which it goes on top of. The super chamber then sits on this square panel around the edge with this extra groove on the underside of the lid, which creates the B space from the lid to the top of the wooden frames that go directly beneath it. This prevents the bees from sticking the frames to the lid and also gives you space to put in an inner cover if you use inner covers. This lip around the, the big lip around the edge, which locks onto the super chamber, also prevents rainwater from running back and into the hive. Next we have the super. So the lid and the super weigh about the same amount. The lid is about 23 or 24 kilograms. The super is usually 23 kilograms. These are much easier to move around than the base, and they are the things that you pick up more often. The super has two little steel bars. I'll show you what those do in a minute. And these little grooves on the top that position the bars. If you look at the underside of the super, it also has a lip. This lip is so that when placed on another super or on the brood base, it locks the component into the bottom one. For the same reason as the lid's lip. We place a super on top of the base. The super 
interlocks with the base, with the lip, the bottom of it. And one stupa and one base combined to make a brew chamber. The reason we split the brew chamber in half was so that it's a bit easier to move around and for when we're molding the beehive it makes the molds much smaller and easier to work with. This improves the success rate with concrete casting. Into the brood chamber go brood frames and we typically use a, a frame with a wax starter strip and wire reinforcement. These frames are 35 millimeter wide so we're going to put 10 of them inside that. These are standard Langstroth size frames, so you would be able to take them straight out of a wooden hive or a wooden Langstroth hive and transfer them straight into here. So again, it takes 10 brood frames, or if you were using 32 millimeter wide frames, it would be 11. That makes a complete brew chamber. On top of the brew chamber, you might put a queen excluder. The normal queen, normal metal queen excluder or plastic queen excluder will fit standard size. It fits perfectly over the brew frames and the super will hold it in place. Next, we'll put a super on top. Here we have a super with the shadow super frames. The same, we use a wax starter strip and wire reinforcement. Some beekeepers prefer to use a full wax foundation sheet. It's just a matter of preference and funding. So here you might see that the steel bars that were on the two sides of the super, they were used to suspend the frames in place. The super fits in on top of the brood chamber. The lip underneath, if you can see there, Will then lock it in place. It also helps you when you're doing your beekeeping to make sure that you've assembled it in the right position. You can slide it until it gets into the right groove. All right. Next, you might put an inner cover on top. An inner cover is just a sheet of material. It could be fabric or or wood or plywood, masonite. Anything works. This is just so that the bees don't stick the frames onto the inside of the lid and when you come to open the hive, it's easy to get the lid off. We put the lid on. Now this lip around the edge makes it easy to know when you put the lid on properly. And that's the complete Langstroth beehive. The bee banker altogether, when you put one super on, weighs about 100 kilograms. Obviously, you can put more supers on top, depending on the strength of your swarm and how much food the bees have during your honey flow. You can keep stacking them up to three or four. Doesn't really make a difference. It's just up to you and how strong your bees are. So let's do that in reverse. Say we're coming to the apiary, ready to inspect the hive. Give the bees a bit of smoke and get ready to lift the lid. The lid overhangs the super a little bit on the sides. This gives you a nice space or lip so that you can grip it, get your fingers underneath and lift. Next we have the inner cover. Inspect your super, check for honey, check the frames. Removing the super as well, it overhangs the, bottom, the, the one beneath it so that you can get your fingers nicely underneath. Especially when you're wearing bee gloves. You have the queen excluder, you can remove the queen excluder, inspect the brood. Now if we want to lift the super off of the brood base, we also have these cutaways that give you space to get your fingers in, under and able to lift now. Next, I just want to show you our beehive stand. There are a lot of ways to make a stand for, for these beehives. Anything will work really. Um, there's just varying amounts of effectiveness 
when it comes to preventing ants getting into the hive. As we've found, always having a strong swarm is a good prevention mechanism for keeping ants out of the hive. If the bees are strong, they'll keep most of the other insects at bay. However, it is nice to not have to worry, so we've got these stands that keep ants out. We tried a lot of different approaches and, and methods and styles of stand, this being the most effective one in the end of the day that we continue to make. It's just 12 millimeter reinforcing rod or wire bar steel with little caps on the tops of the legs. The bottoms of the legs have pins that protrude out about 50 millimeters and sink into the ground, giving it a nice sturdy foundation. The caps at the top, they're upside down. They get filled from the bottom with grease. The grease keeps the ants from climbing up the legs and crossing and into the hive. The brood base then goes straight on top of these little caps. So the ants, when they're climbing up their legs, they can't cross the grease barrier and get into the hive. Thank you for watching, and please, if you have any questions, get in touch with us. This beehive is essentially designed to be an alternative for beekeepers who are struggling with problems like theft and vandalism, fires, you know. It won't replace a wooden beehive in all circumstances, but it definitely has shown to be very effective in certain situations and the results that we're getting from where beekeepers are using these in the field has been really impressive. The last four to five years of us rolling these out all over the world has really shown us how effective a simple solution like this can be and I really hope that you'll be interested enough to try it out.